Well, since I'm going through Dio guitar players, uh, I might as well talk about Tracy G. Tracy Grijalva. Tracy G. Now, he was in World War III. I think he got kind of a raw deal from that singer, whatever that guy's name was, or is. I don't know the ins and outs of that. That's just my sense from reading between the lines on some comments on some YouTube videos. I think Tracy G is, uh, I don't even know, if he were watching this, I don't even know if he would appreciate it if I compared him to Vinnie Vincent. But he's kind of one of these out-of-the-box, out-of-the-box players. And I love that. Now, here's the thing. I, uh, I still have to just get Strange Highways and listen to it from beginning to end. Uh, because I think that's Tracy G's favorite Dio album. But I only had, I had Angry Machines back in, I think I bought that in 1997. And I saw it at Fred Meyer, got the cassette, took it home, listened to it. And I thought, you know, uh, this isn't really my thing, but this, uh, because it's gone in a different direction and Dio is now modernized and, and I find out later it's not really Tracy G's favorite Dio record. But I remember thinking, you know, this isn't my thing, but this guitar player is really good. Like, uh, I don't know who this guy is, but, you know, it's not what I, it's not a continuation of Vivian Campbell or whatever. Uh, it's more modernized. It's like new metal. And it's not my cup of tea, but even so, this guitar player is highly skilled. So then the last few years I've had a chance to listen to some Tracy G and his interpretation of earlier Dio, Dio material in live situations. And without exception, pretty much, I really like what he does, you know, um, what he did. Uh... Because it's really cool when somebody, and it's, I think it's a, a tribute to Dio that he kind of, um, for better or worse, he kind of came across as a control freak or something. That he, when he got with Tracy G, that he sort of just, he allowed Tracy to interpret the material instead of expecting him to play riff for riff. And I really like what Tracy G did with the older stuff. Okay, then moving forward, I have this record, uh, I think it's called Curly Fester Plays the Blues. And it's a Tracy G's Blues record. And I would actually hope for more Tracy G's Blues, Tracy G Blues records because it's almost like a blues clinic. It's sort of got that Tracy G style in it, right? Not even sort of, right? It's um, interwoven, but it also is a good throwback to blues tradition. Then there's like uh, Robot Lords of Tokyo. Now that record only has like two Tracy G tracks, but they're both really cool. And just it just seems like everything Tracy does is, um, you know, it's just his own style. So he sounds like Tracy G. You know, there's not um, there's just not another Tracy G. And this could be another guy that really deserved bigger accolades than he ever got. So I'll leave it at that.